Welcome everyone. My name is John Clay, VP of Threat Intelligence here at Trend Micro, and welcome to my episode one of Trend Talks Threat Research. This is a new program that I'm doing instead of my monthly threat webinar series, which I did for nine years straight. Uh, we decided to mix it up and change it up a little bit. Uh, people are liking short form options more often than not instead of the long form webinars that I've done in the past. So we're going to do this uh, new program, Trend Talks Threat Research, where I'm going to be talking about uh, the threat research that Trend Micro has published over the last two weeks. So this will be a bi-weekly episode uh, series. And I'm going to kind of give you some highlights of what we published and kind of why you would be interested in publishing that. We publish a lot of content at Trend Micro. If you go to trendmicro.com and go to our research section, you'll see lots of blogs, lots of articles, lots of research. Uh, but I wanted to give you kind of a digest on what to uh, expect and what you might be of interest to you. So instead of having you to go and find it and figure it out. Also, in the in the show notes, I will have links to all of the research that I uh, highlight each week or each every other week. So let, kind of let's get started here. Um, first thing I wanted to highlight is recently we did a um, article about generative AI or chat GPT. We wanted to kind of figure out is the, is the hype of how much the adversaries are utilizing this technology really out there? Are they really using it in a lot of cases? And so our researchers dived into it. They actually went into some forums and looked at what they were talking about and you know, it's a good article that gives you some insights into uh, the actual use of it. Um, we've heard some things like uh, worm GPT, fraud GPT. Well, um, I'll give you a hint. Uh, the hype is a lot more than the actual use is today. Now, they will start utilizing it in the future, more than likely. But today, uh, most tried and true methods of attacking organizations still work very easily, and it's not as expensive. So. Take a look at that research. Uh, it's a good it's a good one to take a look at. Um, the next one I wanted to highlight is we do a lot of reports, and this report is actually the uh, Linux uh, threat landscape report. So we published information about what threats that we saw targeting Linux operating system, Linux systems. Uh, Linux is used quite often in cloud uh, infrastructure as well as IoT. And we wanted to give you some ideas of what actually attacks are actually happening, what types of threats you're seeing in if you are running a Linux uh, operating system inside your organization. It's a good report to take a look at so you can start preparing yourself to defend against the threats that we're seeing today uh, targeting that, that infrastructure. Another one, we've been starting to get a lot of questions from customers about quantum computing. Uh, are you, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? How is it going to work? What's it going to affect? How are adversaries going to be utilizing it? So we're doing a, um, a series of articles that are going to introduce you to quantum computing, what it is, how does it work? And then also we're, you know, our, typically as we do, we look at what will adversaries be doing with this technology? One of the things we're a little bit worried about already is a concept called data harvesting and holding. And what that means is that you're seeing adversaries that are exfiltrating data from organizations that's already encrypted. So that's the good news. It's encrypted data, so they can't access it today. But they're going to hold it until the quantum computing technology gets to the point where it actually can decrypt today's encryption technologies. And that's that's one of the big concerns in the future with quantum computing. So. Uh, as a company, you might want to start thinking about looking at the data that you are holding inside your organization, storing inside your organization, even if you have it encrypted today. If that gets leaked and it gets uh, utilized in five or 10 years, could it come back to haunt you? So you want to start looking at how can I protect that a little bit more? And we'll even give you some tips and, and ideas on that. Another one that we published it's a two-part series on the Azure Machine Learning Service. So we looked at Azure Machine Learning Service, and we were looking at, you know, 
um, ways to identify security flaws, vulnerabilities, shedding light on, on some of the unseen aspects uh, um, and silent threats of this technology. So if you're utilizing this technology inside your organization, it's probably a good one to uh, take a look at and figure out. Um, and then the the la another one is which is interesting is you know Trend Micro has been in this business now for 35 years we we look at lots of different threats um, in many cases a lot of our competitors talk about that we only focus on threats and on malware uh, little can, is true uh, we've been looking at actor groups for many many years uh, we monitor actor groups if you look at the MITRE attack framework for example. They label a lot of their the groups out there, APT29, APT28, FIN7. We monitor them. We call them by a different uh, naming uh, methodology. Uh, we use earth, wind, and um, water in a lot of our names. This, this article is actually about earth estuaries, which is a, a APT group that is targeting government and technology for cyber espionage. And this is an interesting one because the, the motive obviously is not um, to uh, ransom them uh, or to destroy data. It's actually to steal data in a uh, espionage fame. So if you're in the industry, government industry, or you're in the uh, technology industry, might be a good one. We obviously, in, in the article, we cover all their TTPs. We cover the attack lifecycle. How do they attack the organization? How, what, what tools do they use to do the initial access, to do the lateral movement, to do the uh, data exfiltration um, but, you know, and then what's their command and control infrastructure look like? So um, we regularly publish a lot articles on these different actor groups. Uh, so, you know, we also look at their campaigns because each actor group may have multiple campaigns going on. They may be targeting different uh, uh, industries, different groups and, and different with different motives. And we, we label those as different uh, campaigns as well. So something that we do inside our research as well. And then the last one I wanted to highlight, my colleague here at Tremico, Ed Cabrera, wrote an article about sanctions that have been put in place on TrickBot and Conti. And this is an interesting article. If you ever get attacked and these tools are used against you and you pay ransom, for example, um, it could come back to uh, bite you because uh, with the sanctions in place, you may be helping the adversary. And so you want to take a look at that article. You want to look at the sanctions that happen because it could affect the way you respond to an attack if, it is, if that attack includes TrickBot or Conti. Um, so it's a good article. Um, you know, Ed's former Secret Service uh, CISO, so he has a lot of uh, experience understanding uh, government uh, policies and regulations and dealing with the threat actors out there in the world. So it's a good, a good article to take a look at. So that's all I had to, for you today. Again, every two weeks, I'm going to come back and talk about what research, uh, research and articles and, and reports that we've published over the last two weeks. I try to give you a little digest on that. Um, I also may start throwing in some data, uh, detection data, risk data that we are pulling from our, from our uh, uh, attack surface risk management and, and obviously our XDR products that are out there all over the world uh, to give you some insights into what's uh, the threats that are targeting as well. I, may be, uh, I will also be doing some webinars in the future, um, but uh, I'm definitely not going to be doing the monthly webinars anymore. So I, you know, I'd, I'd like to have you shift over to this new format, Trent Talks uh, Threat Research. I'll be doing episodes every two weeks. So um, if you leave a comment, if you have some interest, uh, if you're interested in hearing any com um, information that we have, and uh, we'll go from there. But everybody take care and stay safe and have a great day. Bye-bye.